Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have here a Renault Traffic or Vauxhall Vivaro. So I've got another one there in the background that's just going away. But I thought I'd make a video on this one because we're going to attempt to clean the APF. But I'm pretty sure I already know that the results aren't going to be good because I'm going through the live data and there's a lot of stuff that I can see on there that suggests that this DPF has reached the end of life. Um, I'll talk you through how I know how I know that and I'm also going to do a little bit of experiment on if we can bring this back to life. So what I think has happened with this is it's built up a ash solid within the DPF and that's not allowing the passive regenerations or force regenerations to work. This has had both. It's had the passive regenerations trying to work and they failed uh, a number of times and it's also had uh, four DPF regens done which, which hasn't worked either. So I'm already a little way into looking at it so I did already clear the code so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go to the diagnostic history and we'll go back in and look at what we're looking at. Renault. So you can see I only done this just a few minutes ago there. Um, particle filter is clogged oil dilution, particle filter outside the tolerances. So what we'll do is we're going to go back into this vehicle and I'll take you through some of the live data that I've been looking at. Okay, so like I said, I have already cleared the engine faults that were there. If we go to the data stream here, we're going to look at differential pressure. Okay, so we've got the faults already back up. Okay, so I've got a lot of live data here. Um, we're going to go through all of these PIDs and I'll show you what we're looking at. So we've got 24 HPA, which is millibars, it's exactly the same. That's a very high reading for an idle engine. So it is idling at the moment. And if we look here, this is where it gets a bit worrying. It's, the soot is at 62 grams, which is max. It doesn't go anywhere above that. Uh, the soot after the last regeneration was still at 47 grams, which is, which is way too high. It should be less than 6. Uh, it's not been a, a very long ago until it's until it's done a regen. Because um, obviously somebody else has been trying to do this. Someone else has been working on uh, on the vehicle a fair few times. Right, so we're, uh, we're missing something. Number, oh, because I've reset the fault, shit. I shouldn't have done that, but we had a number of failed regenerations, was 48. Um, I think it's because I've maybe reset the fault code. That is now reset to zero. So we did have 48 failed regens, and we can see that after the regen, it's still got 47 grams of soot. So something is not quite right. Okay, so these are the fault codes now that I have repaired. 2002-92, 2002-91, particle filter tolerances, and clogged. Okay, so I'm going to clean it using the Launch UK treatment. Okay, so I've put the Launch UK DPF cleaner in. Now, I know this is not going to be a good advertisement for this because I'm pretty sure it's not going to work, but hey, I might be surprised, it might work. But what I'm looking for is for this to bring the soot grams down below six and the pressure around about five or six HPAs, um, which would give a successful clean. The thing is, is this will clean soot. It will also clean some loose ash, but it won't clean ash solids. So if the problem is that, it won't work. Um, so I'm pretty sure that that's what's gonna happen, I think. Um, we'll look at the results on here and see what's going on. Okay, I've got these two items on the graph, which is particle filter pressure and the soot in the particle filter. Actually, I'll get another item up, which is the engine speed, so you can see where I am, to compare the differential pressure. Right, we'll graph all of that. So if we hold it up to, say, 3000 RPM, round about there, We would be looking for sort of 40 millibars here. It is coming down. And we can see the soot grams are coming down. 
just holding the revs now. Just hold it here for a couple of minutes. So I've reset the faults again. So you can see now what this is doing is it's cleaning out the soot. But can it clean all of it? This soot is just measured by the pressure within the DPF. So if the pressure is is coming down low, it, this will come down low as well. But it will only come down as low as as the pressure comes to basically. The ECU has got a, a, a set controlled uh, amount of pressure where it thinks that the soot should come down and how low it will come to. So I'm just going to continue to hold the revs here for say five or so minutes until the soot grams sort of level out and then we'll see where we are. Well I might be proven that I don't know what I'm talking about because the results have turned out a lot better than I expected. Uh, we'll turn the camera around. So at sort of 3000 RPM we have 30, 30 odd millibars, that's come down a fair bit, but the soot grams hasn't come below 6 again, so I am sort of right. It's come down very very close to where it should be, but the soot grams are not exactly where I'd want them to be, and they are creeping back up a little bit. Okay, engine idling we are at. 7 HPA, it's idling a little bit high there, uh, AC is on, let's turn the AC off, see if that comes down a bit, there we go, 800, no we're still idling at 7, 6 to 7 HPA, so it's just a little bit slightly too high for this, these vans are really really sensitive and if the DPF pressure is up that high, it's uh, it's usually a bad sign. It needs to be below sort of, you know, five, four to five millibars. Um, we can see there that the soot grams are not happy because when you hold the revs up, they are increasing, which indicates that the pressure is higher than the ECU is tolerating it to be. So it shouldn't be climbing as I'm accelerating it here. So what I'm gonna try out on these. I've done it before in a couple of cars and I've had sort of mixed results at the minute so we'll try it again on this one. This is a, a brick acid or brick cleaner. It's the highest strength one that I could find and I have mixed this sort of 30% with, with water. So 30% water in with it. Um, and we'll try this. We'll see if it makes it come down a little bit lower than just a, st a standard clean. What this should do is it should break down the ash solids which is like a sort of like a charcoal uh, it should break that down burn it off and then maybe we can get it pushed out we'll see what it can do so we'll also compare my digital manometer rating of 11.4 which is connected to the pressure sensor okay now i've put that fluid in you'll see there that the pressure now it does increase a bit because obviously as that's breaking down as it's breaking down the ash it will cause more of a blockage until it starts to melt down and break away. Now I will mention that this is not the ideal way to do it because I've done this with the engine running. Ideally you'd want it to sit for at least a half an hour before you'd flush it back out. Um, and you can say that brick acid is corrosive to metal but we're not going to let it sit there for 24 hours or a week. We're just going to have it for say if, if you were, if you had the choice maybe a half an hour the reason I can't do that on these, these engines is the DPF sits very close to the engine and uh, it could backfill into the cylinders and I don't want to do that. Um, so we'll see how it's worked by just pushing it through with the engine running. It doesn't give, a, give it a lot of time to work, but we'll see if it makes a noticeable difference. Alright, we'll watch this live data again, just keep an eye on it and see what happens this time. I think the ideal vehicle for me to do this on would be a Ford Transit, Ford Transit Custom or either one because the DPF sits further away from the from the engine so I could let let this uh, fluid soak within it um, but obviously on this van it's not the ideal van but I thought we'd make the video anyway and it's turned turned out that we've had a few little hoops um, I didn't think the launch fluid was going to get it down as as good as it did um, especially since it's had forced regions that didn't work but the customer has just chucked another spanner in the works for me and said the last guy who done the fourth regions he did check and that there was oil dilution codes but he couldn't clear them um, so 
that would answer the reason why it's had so many failed regen attempts because it would attempt to do the regen but immediately stop because it's got an oil dilution code so yeah we might have been uh, a little bit met, let off track and that just goes to show that giving your mechanic as much information as possible when they're doing something for your car can help and it can help you make your repair cheaper and also the mechanic do his job quicker so we've definitely got a decrease in the pressure and the suck grams are definitely coming down lower so these pressures that I'm looking at on here on most cars I would say that would be concerning because the pressure is a little bit too low but on these it's perfect um, sort of 25 millibars of pressure at 3000 rpm is, is quite normal and below 5 millibars on idle normally I used to say 10 millibars but if anything above 6, 7 on these it's too high you'll get an oil dilution code come back within a week um, and the ECU is just not happy with it being there it wants to come lower and it will keep trying to attempt to do that and while it's attempting to do that it is diluting your oil and after say 30 40 times it will give up but it will do a force re it will do a regen maybe three or four times a day okay final results are four grams of soot so that's below the six and so is that below the five just about where I wanted them to be I'm gonna say that that's been a success and I will try this again some more times in the future where and when I do see a car that's got a similar issue like this it's not that often I see this maybe one out of one out of 50 um, so ash buildup is, is a very very rare rare scene that you that you see it's a very rare it's not very common that I see this but I have seen it um, maybe a dozen times in the past six months so I will see another one soon and we'll make another video on that when I get the chance okay now I can send this report to the customer okay that's it we're all finished on this one and I'll see you on the next video